one. In this video, I would like to introduce the new Async API support we are planning to add for the next Microx release, the 1.0 run. As you may know, Microx is a Kubernetes native tool for mocking or simulating and testing your API on microservices. It already supports REST APIs as well as legacy SOAP web services, but we want to make it a global tooling for supporting any kind of API contract within the, the enterprise. And right now we all know the, the rise of event-driven architecture and asynchronous APIs. So we decided to support this uh, through this new initiative called Async API that is the, the counterpart of OpenAPI for the event-driven style communication. Uh, at first, Async API is a specification uh, allowing you to describe uh, contracts for your events, but it's also uh, a suite of toolings allowing you to generate codes to edit these contracts and to generate uh, documentation, for example. So let's demo how we plan to support this in Microx. Okay, so first let's go to a tool provided by Async API that is the playground. In this playground, I have uh, created a new API. So this is a simple user signed up API. The version is uh, uh, 0.1.0. And uh, this is a contract to describe the, some kind of message that are sent once a new user signed up in our system. So we have defined channels here, user signed up. We have defined a message. And the uh, Async API specification allows us to define some schema for the message payload. So here we've got an object with three properties, full name, email, and age. In the Async API specification, we also have some ways of defining examples. And here I, I have decided to structure examples that way. Uh, an example here, the Laurent example as a summary and you can describe some uh, value for headers or payload using JSON or YAML directly. So once you're okay with this specification, you can download it just right here. Okay. And then try to import it into the Microx tool. So basically Microx act as a repository. So you may see we have a, a already loaded some uh, API, some REST API, a dynamic API or a SOAP web service. And then I can go to the importers and just select the, the upload dialog. Then I can go to my async API specification I just downloaded and upload it on the here. And you can see just right here Microx has described, has discovered a new API. So getting back to the repository, I now have a new event-driven API called user signed up API in version 0.1.0. Then I can get some details about this API. I got these operations and descriptions of the message that are published. And right now in Microx, we have decided to, to add the, the default support of Kafka as an event broker. So just as Microx has discovered this service, it has uh, published a new bindings using Kafka on the Kafka endpoints that is configured with this Microx server. Uh, right here, we also have the name of the topic Microx is using for publishing mock messages. So right now we have just only uh, implemented Kafka bindings, but uh, this can be enhanced with some, uh, for example, RabbitMQ or uh, uh, MQTT bindings in the future. So just getting here the name of the topic, and I can just check that Microx is starting publishing messages for me. Oh. Right now, if I'm using a simple Kafka consumer, the one coming with the Kafka distribution, I can see that uh, the default frequency right now is 10 seconds. So each 10 seconds, I will have new messages coming from my contract examples that are published on the topic so that new consumers can start working even 
if the core component that will produce this message is not uh, developed and ready right now. So it's really an accelerator for parallelizing development with your teams. Okay, so let's see now how we can enhance a little bit of this. So getting back to the playground, I can uh, change uh, some stuffs within my contract. So I'm just incrementing here the series and then I will produce new properties, uh, an identifier that will be a string, some kind of a universal identifier and also um, a send that uh, property that will be a simple uh, timestamp that allows me to track uh, the timestamp when my uh, uh, users has assigned in. So just adding this um, into my examples, the ID, the send hat property, sorry, is JSON here. And um, uh, to give them values, I will use a new feature of Microx that allows me to uh, generate dynamic values for uh, this attribute. So right here I can say that my uh, ID is a random string of 32 characters length and send that, it just the current timestamp, just calling the now function. Same thing here for the YAML payload, so specifying an ID that is random string, okay, and the send at attribute that is the current timestamp. Okay, so just checking everything, we have enhanced the, the examples, we have changed the version and we can now just download our new specification. Okay, getting back to Microx and replaying the import of this new specification, this new contract, just getting here, here, picking the async api.yml file and making Microx discover the contract once again. So when we get back here, yes, we've got this new version 0.1.1. .1. And if we get to the details, we can see that now my Croc is using another topic, a new one. Okay, so we can use it and try with our simple consumer. So just changing here the name of the topic. And we will see in a few seconds that Microx starts publishing messages for us using these uh, dynamic generation features. So right here, for example, we can see that here we have a new random ID for this message and a new timestamp that is corresponding to the, the time this message has been published. So you can see that Microx now supports a sync API and it's very powerful features for uh, rapidly having a sandbox environment where you can have a new uh, consumers uh, play, test and uh, consume your messages even before the component has been uh, written and deployed. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.